Good morning and welcome to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. I've got a perspective or two on the election, but I think I want to keep my job so we can keep my mouth shut. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we appreciate your listing the smoke. Oh, by the way, speaking of your listing, now um, the Nielsen ratings are very important. Uh, they keep uh, Mr. Kirby busy up here, tabulating all the reports that come in. They've not been coming in very fast, folks. So <laughs> we're going to count. We're going to count on callers who call in this morning and listen to our nice guest this morning to help our Nielsen ratings. After all, I have to keep this job or I'll be turned into a janitor up here. So, <laughs> uh, Mr. Kirby, why don't you introduce our nice guest? Oh, I, oh! Before we do that, I've got a, I've got a, a, a kudo. St. John's United Church of Christ once again has stepped to the front and put on a very nice program for the veterans in the area. Uh, the other night at the uh, American Legion. Nicely done. We appreciate so much all the efforts. A lot of people pitched in, a lot of help, a lot of hands. And a neat part of that is uh, they had a bunch of our uh, local Boy Scouts all dressed in their uniforms, and they were their servers. And it was very nice. And, and I just want to thank uh, St. John's United Church of Christ uh, for all the efforts they do each year for the veterans. So uh, there's my kudo for the day, Mr. Kirby. Very good. Uh, yeah. Why don't you introduce a nice guest? She's got up out of bed this morning and she has. combed her hair. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So joining us today is Andrea Rungi, the CEO of the LEAD organization, which I never remember stands for Lincoln Economic Advancement and Development. Mm -hmm. so. Which is extremely important in this community, uh, particularly uh, since we have uh, lost uh, some major industries in town. Mm. And, uh, oh, speaking of major industries, let me give a kudo to the folks at uh, Eaton. And they're an important part of our community. And anyway, we have a little charity or thing going on. Those folks rush all around and they raise up some nice things for Lincoln and Logan County. So let's just tip, uh, put my hat off and tip it in the direction of the Eaton Industries. Go right ahead. I stepped on your toes, Lloyd. Oh, that's all right. I've got ten of them. But that'll so. happen often. <laughs> that's all right. So. Once again, Andrea, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. I, I always love being here. I mean, I've got good coffee. I've got a cat, and I get an opportunity to talk about Lincoln. And, I mean, I, it doesn't get better than that. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm in my element. I'm happy. You're happy. Well, that's what we aim for is happy guests. So you've got uh, several things going on here. It's the end of the year, winding up some activities and kind of looking forward toward next year. Um, I know you had a program earlier um, this month, the uh, Defy Ventures program. Mm -hmm. So how did that go? Why don't you tell folks what that is sure. and um, exactly what took place? So uh, it was our last training for the year community event. Um, we had seven this year, um, which is a lot, I think. Um, and it was well attended. We're, we're getting momentum. Um, this one in particular uh, is about Defy Ventures. And Defy Ventures is a national nonprofit. Um, they are in eight states currently um, and they go into um, the prison system and they work with people who are currently incarcerated to teach them entrepreneurial skills and help them in their reentry. In doing so they um, First of all, I believe the statistic, and I don't have them in front of me, so give me a little grace. Up, we do that. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll call um, you in the so <laughs> the um, I think it's like eighty percent of the people who graduate from their program when they're released, they have a job in ninety days uh, because they're they're teaching them really good skills. But then also um, the recidivism rate, which is the return to to uh, the system rate, mm -hmm. is cut dramatically for this population. So. The, there's national data behind the, this work they're doing. And we are lucky that Illinois is the youngest of the eight states to do this, um, but the second prison that they, they're putting this on in is Logan County Correctional Center. So it is this really great opportunity for folks to learn and change the trajectory of their life while they are inside the system. But it doesn't stop there. They do programming. They have boot camps that are online for anyone who was impacted by 
um, the justice system in any way Mm -hmm. that can go on they can apply and they have a kind of a truncated um, program for them which helps them um, experience entrepreneurial skills in doing that they have a shark tank type um, competition at the end they offer scholarships accelerators uh, grants for those programs to uh, for people who are actually starting businesses when they get out Um, it is phenomenal and it's happening in our backyard and in order for that to work um, first of all they are looking for a facilitator here um, because they took on Logan right in COVID Mm -hmm. so it it is a program that is going but needs a little more support to continue they are looking for a part-time facilitator here in at Logan County I have the um, job description I put it on uh, Leeds Facebook page not the description but direct message me on Facebook I'd be happy to share it with you um, they're looking for really good people who are good people per people <laughs> they're people people um, yeah. and they're willing to learn mm-hmm. and it's because they're willing to teach them and anyone who is just as impacted is actually encouraged to apply they are doing amazing work um, and with all kinds of populations they actually were talking to the group because our group on Monday very community-minded folks in the room Mm -hmm. Um, and they were talking to those people about doing they have a community aspect to this which would be people who are out but actually are in a certain area that they could all join together and take this class together so they're really trying to make it as easy as possible for people to learn these skills and get Um, the ability to become their own entrepreneur. They call it CEO of your new life. That's what it is. There's all kinds of, it's like alphabet soup in nonprofit work, but theirs has like a whole directory of alphabet soup, but they call it CEO of your new life. Um, And they have actually some programming that's specific for um, young people who have maybe are in, in the juvenile justice system that is prepared specifically for their cognitive development, the stage they're in. So they really have taken the science behind it and made it applicable to all kinds of populations that have had these kind of experiences. At the end of the program, they each get a certificate from the Drucker um, School of Entrepreneurship. I mean, it, it's legit. Um, and even if they don't use that to own their own business, they really have something that they can put on a resume and build they need local volunteers to do that to go out and just sit with people read their resume and say how would you tell me about yourself you know to have those experiences to prepare them for when they walk out the door and are are ready to you know to take on a different life become a tax-paying citizen all the good things that you know we hope that they do um, and we learn empathy along the way about about that population so um, it's coming it's here uh, it's moving forward and growing so uh, awesome opportunity um, for that and then they actually have trainings for businesses who are um, willing to work with those populations as they um, transition out of the system and into their reentry. Mr. Kirby, it's been a long time since we started with such a positive note on viewpoint. That's true. This is true. <laughs> we have a real positive beginning. Another positive part we have on this program, we have to have sponsors. And if we don't recognize those sponsors, we're going to be in deep trouble. So go right ahead, Mr. Ash. Back live in the studios here, WLCN, high on the point of County Road 2250. <laughs> Our guest this morning in Viewpoint is Andrea Andrea Rungi, and she is the chief of the LED. You go ahead, Mr. Kirby, and elucidate on that. That oh. means go ahead and tell them what's up. Well, all right. <laughs> She's with the LEAD organization, which stands for Lincoln Economic Advancement and Development. And uh, before the break, you were telling us about the Defy Ventures program. 
and uh, some of the good things that come of that. Where did that take place? That took place at the Dugan Center. Uh, I don't know if you've been there lately. Um, they hosted us in their co-working space, which is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, all kinds of people. We had or space there. Where is this place, Andrea? Um, it's the Dugan Center. It is on McLean Street, very north McLean. Mm -hmm. um, you, the best way to get there is to go out um, Kickapoo and then take a right mm -hmm. at, at the it right, was an yeah. odd fellow school or, uh, oh. yeah thank you all right that helps me out yeah mm. Well, they have all kinds of space out there. Uh, they have co-working space. They have conference rooms, um, which is what we were at. So I had about um, 18 people come and attend this training or, or learning session. Um, and we were in one of their conference rooms, so the bigger of the two. But we had all kinds of things, and it was great for me because I could just uh, bring my laptop in. Uh, and they had an HDMI cable that goes directly into the, the table, the conference mm -hmm. table. And it, she was ready to go. So it was amazing. Um, a facility as far as ease of use. And it was great because Melissa O'Dell, who was the, um, is the executive director of Defy Ventures, is in Chicago. So it was an opportunity for us to kind of showcase um, some co-working space or things if she needs to have um some meetings here in Lincoln since she's working in Logan um, and she, she said oh my gosh this is so beautiful I'm <laughs> usually either in my house or in a prison so th <laughs> this is like being on a luxury vacation mm -hmm. for her so uh, just great space if you haven't taken the time to to look out there or if you have people who are coming in to visit for the holidays and need a quiet place to go and work um, they can plug in there easily um, really? they can rent by the day um, and have a hot spot table. I'm not, I'm not now. I'm, I'm into the weeds here with my tech terms, but they can you know plug and play there. Um, so if you have people who are coming in but still need to get some work done and it's a little crazy with kids and holiday, it's a great place to go. Also, they have um, event space there, so um, it, they really have a lot to offer. Uh, and that's Troy and Jantina Lowe. Um, who run that they're awesome and that was one of your you said you had seven programs we over had the past seven year this i know you had a lot of succession planning programs you also had the um uh i lost the name of reversing the exodus. reversing the exodus yeah. program that was i think that, fairly timely for for our area can you kind of tell us what happened at that one sure so that one we had in august and it was interesting to me we had a very good crowd a diverse crowd um and so thanks to you I, i'm sure that's a, 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 a kudos to to wlcn for having us um uh, come out and talk about it before it came um it's a university of illinois extension program talking about how do we attract and maintain our young adult population which um, is so vital in rural Boy, development that was really interesting yeah it was yeah. fascinating um, Pam Schalhorn is the person who presented that from U of I extension she has seven years of data um, that backs that up um, and if, if I know we were talking about Logan and and although we did lose considerable amount of population between the last two censuses since I since I maybe <laughs> <laughs> we um, we are not alone I want to say it's something like 98 of 102 counties mm -hmm. lost population so um, we're in good company but it is something that we need to think about um, and you know economic development you wouldn't maybe think was so closely tied to that but when you think about the fact that school age children are the ones that are are being brought in and, and retained by those people um, so our school systems affected our workforce is affected all these Players are affected by whether or not we are um, a good place for that population to come live and stay or come back to after they go away to college. So this was a panel discussion after her presentation of local young entrepreneurs who were saying, hey, this is what I want 
in a community. This is how I get my information, which was fascinating. <laughs> like they search TikTok for answers on how to like get wine stains out of rugs or whatever they might search mm. for. Just lost me. <laughs> <laughs> At wine or TikTok? No, no, TikTok. <laughs> Not the wine. <laughs> whatever they're looking for, the answer mm -hmm. for it, they're looking for it on TikTok, um, which means that when we are communicating with them, we need to be thinking about how are we getting that message so that they are the ones hearing it. Lloyd, I know you teach mm -hmm. communication, right. and you have to know your audience. If exactly. we want to be able to have those people think that Liberty, Liberty, that's where I'm from, <laughs> my hometown. Oh, okay. Lincoln Logan is a good place to live, work, and play. We have to be reaching them where they are. Um, which means we have to know what they're listening to, where they're getting their information. 648-5510. Our guest this morning, Ms. Andrea Rungi, uh, here to talking about development. And, and, and I find this fascinating this morning, except for the TikTok part. You left me <laughs> on that. <laughs> no, seriously now, uh, I'd invite our listeners to uh, pay close attention to what this young lady has to say for us and call in with a comment on her questions. She'd be very happy to answer any questions. Don't ask about TikTok because that's that hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't ask me about TikTok either. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what are some of your major challenges, uh, Andrea, as you go to open the door for work each day? And I suspect there are many as, as you open the door. It depends, which is like the worst answer ever. Um, but it depends on, you know, my days are always different. Um, what I intend to do for the day or the things I t intend to tackle for the day mm -hmm. sometimes are very different happens. than what I do for the day. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some entrepreneurs that are looking at bringing new business to town. Um, and... I can't tell you much about that. No, no, we understand because that. Because we can't yeah. do that till the ink's dry. Of course. But there are days when I am, um, I've been in some of uh, our downtown businesses from the basement all the way to the top. I sometimes scream like a girl uh, when I'm doing that because there are things that I unexpect um, to see. <laughs> like uh, there, I was upstairs in the Blue Dog building the other day. There's a stuffed coyote up there, uh, which <laughs> scared the Bejesus, Bejesus out of me. Um, but, and I screamed like a girl, and I was with a bunch of dudes, and they were like, what did you scream about? I'm like, it's a coyote. It's fine. It's stuffed. It's just unexpected. Um, but, you know, so some days it's that, and, and we're looking so six hours at a time for a space that fits their needs. Um, the other part of that, so that's a, sometimes a challenge, and sometimes banking is a challenge, sometimes, and a, a lot of times, actually, banking is a challenge, capital mm -hmm. for a new entrepreneur is a yeah. challenge. But sometimes it is finding the right spot. The other side of that coin is when you're doing that, you're seeing someone new look at where you live, I have that perspective often because I'm not from here, but when I'm entertaining people like from Chicago, Melissa, or from um, other places that are here, I get to see Lincoln through their eyes, which is super positive. Like, this is awesome. It's so cool. I love this downtown. There's so many things. It's building. It's potential. There's, there, It's ripe with possibility. And I think that if I had a challenge, it is transferring that kind of enthusiasm to the people who live here and are used to seeing those things and don't see them as special because it's so special and people who are coming from other places see that and people who live here are the ones that I hear things that aren't so um, glorious from and in fact Andrea we do have some special and I emphasize that word special shops downtown small do. uh, small businesses very unique and we're really tickled to death they're down there because they attract people downtown. They certainly do. Uh, and, and and it's a great time to talk about them because <coughs> I don't know, I know you've had them on your show before. The Our downtown businesses are a very uh, tight-knit group. Mm -hmm. They're well-oiled. They have good vision. They work together. And they create some 
uh, and special in this case seems a little lackluster. Mm. They they create with Christmas coming. They create an anticipatory season for people who live here or people who visit here. You think about the holidays, and my husband said this just the other day, it's kind of like going on vacation. Part of the best part of the holidays is anticipating them coming. Yes. And when we sit in front of a computer and we're looking for things online, we don't get that experience. When we're downtown and we're shopping, like today, the snow is falling. It's p- picturesque. It is a mm-hmm. Hallmark movie incarnate. Um, and we get the opportunity to do that because we live here and we see those those things. But that, um, what is coming up in our downtown area, is a well-crafted experience and these people have been working on making that happen for a very long time so when we talk about that we talk about part of the the reason we want to shop local and not only is it because it is a thing that helps us get in that anticipatory holiday spirit it's because it is much more impactful to our local community when we spend those dollars locally so I did this last year and we'll test your memory there's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we take $100 and we spend that $100 in a shop downtown, and, um, well, I'm not going to call out anybody, but if we spend, <laughs> send it, spend it in a shop downtown, how much of that do you think stays in our community of $100? Mr. Kirby? $91. Ooh. Do you have a guess? Yes, about uh, about sixty-five. Okay, Jim. Uh, is this a higher or lower? Uh, <laughs> Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Okay, you're very all very good guesses, uh, Mr. Gossett. You're close. This is seventy dollars. So about that hundred dollars, seventy dollars of that stays in our community and cycles again. If we spend that at a major retailer, and I am not in any way keeping any major retailer from coming to town please come and visit us or online but <laughs> if or we online. Sp- oh, <laughs> well i'm getting there yeah, okay. if we spend it at a major retailer that's here in town mm-hmm. how much of that hundred dollars do we keep about 38 Ooh, and 27 <laughs> 15 30 it's 30 you're all very very close uh it, it's 30 dollars which is still great if we spend that hundred dollars online, how much of it stays in our local community? Eight bucks. I was going to say six. Three. One. One. Only if the driver is local, the delivery driver is local. Okay. So Good those then. dollars, and there are times when we have no choice because what we need isn't sure. available. Right. But I would challenge you to look first. Because if you're spending it downtown, of that $100, you're investing $70 in your community. If you spend it at the west side, that $100, you're investing $30 of it back in your community. And if you can't find it and you go online, that's fine. But know that that money is investing in someone else's community. So it's not that any of it is bad and we all have to juggle these things because Mm -hmm. that's the environment we live in. Mm -hmm. But it does make a difference in where you spend those dollars and where that investment is going. We oftentimes think of it as a transactional thing, right? We are giving cash for a good. And it is that. But when you look at the economics of it, it's much bigger than that. It is an investment. And the way that you decide where that investment goes is on where you spend that $100. Econ 101. And our... Lecturer this morning is Professor Andrea Runge, <laughs> and now seriously, uh, you you addressed some basic truths which we all need to remember. Six four eight five five one zero. Somebody call in and talk to this young lady. She's full of knowledge, <laughs> and I'm full uh, of something. And, well, <laughs> no, this is a radio station. I'm not going there. <laughs> but seriously, uh, I find uh, your subject matter uh, entertaining and uh, also full of knowledge. Uh, nobody ever stopped to think how much money stayed in the community when they go shop something. They get it, they need it, and the, the price is right, and they do it. And uh, But online shopping is, is another story, 
entirely, and uh, we get no benefits at all. And uh, Jim Bezos is a nice fellow, but uh, we leave Amazon to do, <laughs> do their own thing. Uh, Andrea, how did you come by this job, my dear? Uh, you you come to us with a, with a wealth of knowledge, mm. uh, or perhaps more importantly, a wealth of enthusiasm. So let's talk about that just a minute. So I've been doing economic development in one way or another for my career. Um, so right out of college, my, my undergrad is in um, public speaking. And right out of college, I ended up in a bank, which is a, a very different experience <laughs> when you were a speechwriter uh, for four years. But um, so I learned about um, banking, and I, I was in the commercial lending department, which is um, at which I don't. I just stumbled into it. I was the temp, and then they hired me on, um, and I kind of grew up through the ranks there, and started doing commercial loan servicing, which is where I was answering questions for people. So I got to understand uh, how to explain basic finance to people. And when I left there, I went to a, a national retailer or a wholesaler where I was, I managed half of the country's sales force, their outside sales force. Um, so I got a little bit of retail, um, the background of retail and how that works. Mm -hmm. um, and they downsized and I was without a job. And I went just... Um, to do some regular uh, networking, I went to my old boss who had started working at a nonprofit, and I said, hey, here's my resume if you know anyone looking, and he said, don't take a job until you talk to me first. I'm here by myself, and I need someone with your skill set. And oh. um, so about uh, two weeks later, he hired me, um, and I ran a um, statewide revolving loan fund for 18 years um, and I got the opportunity to work with entrepreneurs and help them um, kind of grow their business is when I got really into that part um, and then I got a master's in community and economic development um, because it, I found it like it is me mm -hmm. in an occupation and I don't know how to explain that any better. Um, then I went to be a statewide community and economic development director for Illinois Association of Community Action Agencies for a couple years. I was teaching people how to do it, and I really just wanted to get into a community and help them uh, and stop talking about it. Start well, doing you it. know, Lloyd, they talk about enthusiasm for the job. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, personified. Well, and I can tell you that my desire to help entrepreneurs, um, which is different than my knowledge, uh, but my enthusiasm comes from the fact that I've seen it firsthand. So I grew up in poverty. Um, my family was very... Um, uh, loving and wonderful and we didn't realize we didn't have much but we didn't um, and my parents worked several jobs always to try to you know balance this we went through lots of times when um, like my dad was unemployed he broke his leg he was unemployed for uh, almost an entire year mm. kind of, you know getting that back up to snuff and um, he was doing things like he played bass guitar in a band to, to pay for groceries we did things like that he started his own business when when I was in high school and it was the beginning of a domino effect that led them to the fact that they are retired now mm -hmm. um, which they wouldn't I don't think if ha that piece hadn't happened he wouldn't have they wouldn't have been able to do that they would still be working success 101 right <laughs> so when I watched that from the front seat right um, it became very different when I help an entrepreneur I'm helping my dad I'm paying it forward um, and when I'm helping a community in a lot of ways I mentioned Liberty um, in a lot of ways I saw Liberty be the the community that would stand up and take care of its own when something happened um, I lived in Springfield for 26 years it was a wonderful experience lots of great friends I didn't have that so th having those experiencing experiences and doing them here 
brings all of that together. I get to help a community that helps each other. I get to help entrepreneurs, which pays forward my dad. And I get to really help the, um, the economic vitality of the people who live here, which helps like, you know me as a little kid. I mean, it, it is... It is not a job for me. <laughs> I have a hard time taking the two pieces apart. You can ask my husband. There are days when he wishes maybe I had more of an arm's length there. Um, but I can't. It is, it is who I am. And I am happy every day because I get to do my, my job. The job. The best job. What employer wouldn't like to have an employee <laughs> like that, Mr. Kirby? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, we've got a tough job. Well, I'm not sure who our guest next week is going to be, but but they're going to have to measure up some tall shoes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, uh, I mean, sincerely, I appreciate your enthusiasm you bring to your daily activities. Uh, and that obviously spills over to your work every day. And you mentioned the fact that, uh, without being specific, that we have some possibilities of kind of wafting around the clouds out there for some new uh, businesses in town or, mm -hmm. or new manufacturers, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. That comes as a direct result of people like us that uh, can sell Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Now, Lordy New York, she sure is good at selling Lincoln. <laughs> I would offer that uh, we each have the opportunity, right? If you see someone who is in town and you don't know them, you know, show them hospitality. That's one of, of Leeds' core values is hospitality. Like Everybody is a potential entrepreneur, and I think that's the empowerment piece, right, is to letting someone get to a point where they can dream about having their own business and then helping them get there. But the other part of it is, is that we have the ability to encourage each other and, and lift people up. And if they're new in town and they're looking, the warmth that they experience by being in our downtown shops and meeting people along the way is not lost on them. They are falling in love with Lincoln. And part of that process is that we have to love ourselves first and then show that as an outward affection for our, our place where we live. And it's catching. And when people see that and they see the opportunity, which they're seeing anyway, it becomes alchemy. It becomes something that you cannot plan for. But believe me, it's beautiful when you see it happen. 648-5510, our guest this morning, Andrea Rungi. Mrs. Rungi, when you were in college, did you take speech classes? I, uh, for four years, yes. I kind of that thought that kind of rubbed off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your enthusiasm. How about debate? Did you get involved in, in the subject of debate in, in your formal education? I did not take any debate classes. Um, I, uh, my husband would probably tell you that comes naturally. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't need we'll any formal that. education we'll, for that we'll one. Give him that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I, I, I did take a lot of um, speech class persuasion theory, um, a lot of figuring out the, the um, not the psychology, but there is a lot of psychology to messaging, how we learn, how we take in information and, and turn it around. Those things change all the time. Um, like Lloyd could tell you about like repetitive things that we have to hear before it kind of sinks in. It used to be it was like eight and now it's like 22 or something, mm -hmm. probably more now. <laughs> um, things that we have to hear over and over again before they actually become part of our, our automatic thinking. Um, so those things all kind of come together. Um, but luckily when you've been um, given the gift of gab as I have <laughs> and had those things crystallized, they happen quicker. Sometimes that can be very positive. It depends on how you how you control it. <laughs> <laughs> well, control. Well, seriously. Mm, yeah. Seriously. Um, uh, enthusiasm unbridled, as opposed to enthusiasm bridled. There's a there's a big difference. Mm. Focused passion, right? Exactly. Yeah. So one of your passions you're focusing on, I saw in the recent press release that uh, Leeds teaming up with the next site. Um, we are. Hoping to get some uh, establishments out on the west side. Can you tell us about that partnership? Sure. So it is uh, a, a fairly new partnership. The announcement is very new. It was last week. Um, so next site is a national um, development 
I, w- I wouldn't say they're a broker, but they are they are in the broker line of work, right? They're marketing places to developers and making connections to help them both. And um, there is a program under Ameren, Illinois right now, which is how it came to, to lead, which is that Ameren is willing to underwrite a major part of their expense to help rural communities in, in Ameren, Illinois' footprint. So by taking the opportunity that we had with leveraged funds from Ameren, we can get a deeper penetration into marketing to that specific retail um, customer into that market um, by, by teaming with Dexite. So having that takes, or developing it, takes years and years of work um, and a lot of money. And we are only a year and a half in, or a year and nine months into our tenure here at LEAD. And um, we have a lot of great donor base, which everything we do is is from local donations. Um, and therefore, everything that we help local entrepreneurs with is free of charge. But when we do that, we have to be really good stewards of our money. That's another core value of leads. We want to be good stewards. And when we do that, we have to think about how do we make the biggest bang for the least amount of money. And partnering with someone like Nextsite to put a highlight on our West Side locations that are vacant or could be developed is a way to maximize my one employee um, in a very economical way. Uh, they are just so we signed the contract in September and already we have been represented by them um, with other communities. Um, we're not alone, but with other communities, we've been represented at the uh, international convention of shopping centers is what I want to say. It's ICSC. And that has been in Florida, in Atlanta, and in Chicago. So we've, we have had the opportunity to have someone talking about Lincoln and Logan County in those things without us having to leave or get a booth or pay for a booth or, or um, get their attention. It would be me kind of standing around waving my arms, uh, which I think they would get attention, but not the kind we want. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is a way for us to be really strategic and good stewards of the these dollars to leverage this opportunity. I also want to mention that um, we had, have talked a lot about community learning events. We are planning them in 2023. They're they're going to be great. Um, the f- one that we're working on most right now is on social media. There's a young man in um, Mount Pulaski. His name's Kale West. He has a company called Print Digital. Um, they are blowing up um, on a social media stage, and he's willing to come in and give a presentation for free to um Lincoln businesses about how to better use social media to get your message out and then he's agreed to have like a um, quarterly follow-up because he's meeting with the Twitters and TikToks and all those people every um, month or quarter to learn what they're changing how they're changing the algorithms he's willing to share that with us in real time for free um, there are all kinds of things like that happening and that is being underwritten in 2023 underwritten <laughs> sorry um, by the community foundation land of Lincoln uh, out of Springfield so that we got a $2,000 scholarship so we can provide food um, to local people as an enticement to come in and learn about the things we've got going on talking about learning about the things you've got going on um, as you mentioned you've had several programs throughout the past mm-hmm. year you have also got a survey out now where people can uh, provide you some feedback as far as the things you've been doing and maybe things they'd like to see in the future I'm guessing yes yeah, so we uh, have a, a survey out we have a couple surveys out um, our partners right now have a partner satisfaction survey whether they are a donor a community partner um, or a collaboration partner or anyone else to give um, good feedback about what they know about lead how we're doing on our community values um, you know just a good assessment I can be killing it 
in an office, but if people don't know what I'm doing, it comes through in that survey. Like, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So it's a way for us to do the evaluation to give in to that cycle so that next year we're doing better. Um, this work is never done. It's always in a cycle. And we use um, a model that they use in community action because that's where I was for a long time. Um, which is results-oriented management. Um, it is like results-oriented management light because, <laughs> but I'm constantly looking this, I'm in my evaluation stage so that next year, what we're doing is even more specific to what people want. And then we'll do that every year um, and recycle that information into something that's more positive or useful, beneficial. Well, go ahead. I thought, I thought you were ready with Oh, it. no, I thought you were you were moving there. I didn't know if you had a question or just, you were just showing just off your 91-year-old sweater. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was doing. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned, real quickly, you mentioned uh, uh, economics, and that, uh, that includes borrowing. Years ago, many years ago now, I was going to, I needed some significant uh, money uh, for my business, and I was going to the Small Business Administration in Chicago. And I went there in a chauffeur-driven limousine <laughs> to borrow money. <laughs> a friend of mine had a car, and he says, have him take you. <laughs> well, they turned me down. <laughs> they, they must have seen me get out of that chauffeur-driven limousine. I was going to say, yeah. uh, that could either go really well or no. really, really not well for no, you, depending he, on who. The bottom line was, he told me, I, I, he said, you're too well qualified. You can get your money at home, which is what I did. Anyway, uh, I always thought that was kind of interesting. Go to the Small Business Administration in the United States of America. America a chauffeur driven limousine to borrow yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Right? Only in America. <laughs> Roll up looking like Mr. Monopoly, they probably uh, weren't going to give you much, I'm guessing. So. Um, I was thinking Daddy Warbucks, but yeah. yeah. That works too. Um, but talking about money, there's also been some grants that uh, you've been um, you've received, and I believe you can administer, you administer some as well. Is that accurate? Uh, that is not accurate, okay. but uh, <laughs> but 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 it's in the neighborhood of accurate. So um, that's close. <laughs> yeah. So Lead is thrilled to be a small business community navigator through Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, which means that we learn about um, the the grants that they have coming down the pike, and we help them spread the word, get training out to local businesses, um, help them self qualify and then help them navigate through the process so we did that through back to business um, which was which ran gosh at the uh, August to October of 21 and then we actually were able to get some of those funds into local businesses but that didn't happen until 22 um, and that's through that community navigator program our cornucopia of knowledge this morning Ms. Andrea Runge uh, economic development in Lincoln, Illinois, and somebody is getting a buck for their a bang for their buck. <laughs> we appreciate your your enthusiasm. We appreciate your giving us your time this morning, uh, Mr. Rungi. Uh, those folks who missed your chance to call, we'll meet you at uh, Old Joe's at ten o'clock. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Andre. Thank you.